What's up, fuckers? What's up, Brennan? How are you doing, man? How's all the things? Sup, Donna? Como as tas? Happy Friday Night Live. What's up, fuckers? Hello, NJ, just in time. How goes all the things? How's your Friday? What's up, John Jones? Hello, Shannon. What's up, dog? It's Friday Night Live. What's up, Kate? Gray hair, don't care. What's happening? How do de do? Hola, fucker. What's up? I'm glad. That's fantastic, Brendan. Did you guys all have a good week? Hello, Cindy. What's a happening? Aaron Johnson, welcome to the show. How you doing, brother man? <clears throat> you got a gorilla hashtag. Drop that fucker in the comments. Hello, Kevin Snow. What's up, Victoria? Hells, yes. Great week. Yep, yep, yep. Hello, Claire. How are you tonight? Awesome sauce. Just wrapping up from another busy week. That's fantastic. What up, dude? All is well done under. That's fantastic. Fact, I've been listening to a band from down under for the last couple of days. One of my favorite all-time bands. Ugh. <clears throat> In fact, there is a reference to it on this Friday Night Live to them. Hello, Doreen. What's up? Just did an amazeball client session after I'm finally getting how kind my clients need to be. Wild ass week. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome sauce. Let's talk. There's really only one thing in your way, and there's an easy way to remove that. But first, we need to get clear on what it is that's in our own way. We need to be real about it. We need to be realistic about it. And we need to be clear about it. Let's talk about that. I got some time with my tail in the water. So good week. Fantastic. Hello, Melissa. What's up? Let's get real tonight. Midnight oil and in excess. Nope and nope. As heavy metal as I am, really, Midnight Oil, in excess. Like, don't get me wrong, they're all right. Who is also known as the Thunder from Down Under? What's up, Joseph? Well, hello there, Melissa. There is a thing in your way, and we need to figure out what that is so we can easily remove it. I just wrapped up 30 days with a group of people going through a fairly simple thing. And <clears throat> uh, I clicked on the wrong fucking thing. I just wrapped up a, a month going through a fairly simple thing. Here's the thing. Here's what it is. Here's why it's important. Here's why we're doing it. Here's how to do it. Here's exactly how to do it. 30 days. Light activity, a little bit of a mental shift in some cases, maybe a little bit of new information, maybe a slightly different way to do it, but here's the thing to go do. And <clears throat> it prompted me to do this. What's up, John Davey? It prompted me to do a Friday Night Live on this. We used to talk about mindset shit all the time. This is not the woo mindset stuff for those of you looking for that. Uh, <clears throat> this is not going to be that. This is about the only thing that's actually in your way and how to fucking remove it. Root and stem. Hello, Julie, a long time. Hope you're doing well. What's up, Chris Harden? Sup, dude. Hello, Dan Kurtz. Dan, 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 Dan. Isn't that a male strip show? LOL. What, Sink the Pink? Hmm. 
Me, I'm the thunder. Yes, ACDC. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> They're out the head junk. What up, dude? So let's talk about it. And <clears throat> here's a little bit of medicine for some of you. Ain't nobody else in your way. Ain't nothing outside of you in your way. There are no circumstances or situations that are in your own way. There is really only one thing in your way. We're going to talk about it tonight. A little bit of medicine for you. Mental gardening. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. Hello, Elizabeth. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this with as much love as I can. Of course, as soon as I say that, a couple of people bounce because my take is not that they've got it totally situated. Because really there ain't really anybody that has this totally situated. Even the people that you consider the most successful at every aspect of life deal with this thing. And dealing with it can go well or can go wrong. But if you don't deal with it, it always goes wrong. What up? So let's talk about it. What's in your way? Let's see how honest with ourselves that we're being. Hello, Heather. I'm a thinking this is a call to my brain. Hmm, could be. Como astas, how thee be? <clears throat> Whoa, what the fuck is that? What you got? What's in your way? Right now, workload. I'm in my way. Hello, Chris Coddington. How you doing, brother man? Let me phrase this a slightly different way. There are things that you want that you do not have. There are things that you want to not have that you do have. And there are things that you want to be different in your life circumstances, relationships, health, fitness, money, time, what you do with your time, where you're at, where you spend your time at, who you hang around with, what you do, how long it takes you to fall asleep at night, stay asleep, for you to blow past that glass ceiling that you're somehow some way stuck at and you can't figure out why you can't break through that having a freaking awesome day yes you are chris spent one day in my monthly mentorship and sent me a message today with an oh my god holy shit balls fucking rad super happy for you super proud of you I'm dealing well, taking care to do this slowly and well. It's all within your own influence. Ah, there we go. Core influence. Some of y'all been around a while, huh? Yep. <clears throat> Only a couple of you guys posted in the comments when I asked you what's in your way. First thing that comes to mind unless you're scared, embarrassed, ashamed or whatever, like you don't really need to be. This is a, this is a well manicured environment. <clears throat> What's up, Charles? Hello, Anthony. Como as toss, gentlemen. Cool. Hello, Terry. What's up? Cindy says me. Claire, fraud syndrome. Ah, yes. Yes, I am still giddy about all to all of to be real awesome. Time to have a cigar soon. All these FNLs always make me want a smoke. Rad. Oh me. Oh for sure it's myself. Me and my own insecurities are OFT in my way. 
Yeah. Cool. What up, LP? Road trip and so I'll be in and out. Fantastic, brother man. Don't text and drive. I'm in my way. Fear of being myself. I'm embracing the idea of how weird I can be. Ah, now we're getting a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to go all the way deep tonight. Some of you are going to like it and be grateful and appreciative of it. And some of you are going to feel bad about how you feel about it. Maybe that's a good thing. My horrible, painful knees. Myself and clarity of who. <clears throat> Don't text and drive. Yep. Hey there, Landon. What's holding me back? Well, I'm still having a little trouble getting back to working full days after my neck injury, but Leeds Lab is helping me get back to doing the doing. That's fantastic. That is excellent. I'm glad that you're on the mend. <clears throat> Ash, I'm at the bucks. Fear of succeeding. Hmm. Cool. We're, we're a little past the tip, aren't we? Right? Like, let's get it out on the table so we can fucking deal with it. I'm just a guy on the internet. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV, right? <clears throat> I have opinions just like everybody else. I've worked through a lot of my own shit, being in my own way. I've seen a lot of other people work through their own shit and get out of their own way. And I've helped some people work through their shit and get out of their own way. So this is just like my opinion. You can take it as advice if you'd like. If you don't like it, that's fantastic. If you think I'm wrong, awesome sauce. With that out of the way. Oh, now you're flirting with self-awareness. Yeah, we're gonna get there. I'm just taking the time to adjust working a different way. I'm way out of my comfort zone with all this new way of handling workloads. It's only temporary. Yes, that's fantastic. What's holding me back? Tech shit. Yep. Not exactly what I'm talking about though. What has stood in my way? Me and the beliefs that I allow to hold me back. Ah, here we go. I'm giving fewer and fewer shits about what others think. I am so fucking thankful for that. What's up, Brock? Dr. Porter in the house. Yep, Heather. Realizing how much I stay in the victimhood and the when will someone else take care of me after having to take care of myself since five years old. Taking care of myself is a lifelong thing just now realizing how to do it in healthy ways. Good. Um, I don't think we really know each other yet, so the, the, the beating that you may feel you're going to receive tonight don't take it that way. It is really meant with the best intentions and from a place of love. I'm kind of a fucker though. And I come off that way and I'm kind of straightforward. So just if you're not totally familiar with me, <clears throat> we'll get there. If only you knew someone that could help with that, right? LP, the relationship doctor on FNL. Exactly. Ooh, that's actually a good one. Relationship doctor. I might want to do that. I know I kid, I kid. Yep. We're overthinking things. Yes. We're going to get to that too. A mountain of knowledge and thinking patterns that are basically useless in marketing and conversation. Okay. I'll buy that. I have to bloody go out and I love these FNLs. Awesome sauce. Catch the replay. What's up, Michael? How you doing, brother, man? I'm good. Isla is my coach. Cool. Landon is loving, bro. He will get you to the place you need to be. That's, that's kind of close. Pardon me while I take off my clothes. <coughs> oh, I see. We've got like a minute and a half lag tonight. That's fantastic. Awesome sauce. Sorry, I know that's fucking loud. We'll be done here in one second. There we go. <coughs> Uh-oh, I don't know. It was that kind of F and L. Yeah. Well, now it's a party. Exactly. Somebody grab the pineapples. You're fired, John. You're fired. Pineapple doesn't fucking go on pizza. I don't want to hear a goddamn word about it. My show, my opinion, you eat your own fucking pizza in silence. 
Oh, now he's taking his clothes off. Yep, it's not bad. I need a cigar. Awesome. Need to unlearn to give a shit. Yes. Who? Yep. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cool. This is gonna be a good one. I need to find a dry piece of briar real quick. I wonder if it's the behemoth. Mm. Close. Close. Any mean? I've only got forty of them to choose from. That'll work. <clears throat> Okie dokie. We don't need no stinking pants. Nope, gorillas don't wear pants. Has changed since I have been gone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You're all fired. I had a cauliflower crust pizza tonight. Pretty damn good. Cool. Munches and silent crumbs. All right, let's dive in, shall we? If you don't have these amenities, you may want to grab them. You may require a blanket. You may need something to drink. Kleenex are not a bad idea. Beach coma, dirt nap, awesome. Cool, guess what? <clears throat> Everything that's happened to you up to this point, good, bad, doesn't matter. Everything that you've been through up to this point has gotten you to this point. Some of us seem to have much easier paths than others. Get over it the path that your life took to get to this present moment and the path that your life will take from here until the day you die is not something you can bitch about. Everything that's happened to you, for you, around you, because of you, in your life up to this point doesn't fucking matter. The only thing that actually matters is right this moment and what you've got going on in here and in here. Somebody mentioned something along the lines of stories. I don't think that was the word that was used. I have a blanket. I'm out of booze. Shit. Drinks. FNL calls for the best coffee. Yep, I got a coffee. We're planning. Yep, totally. I make a mean almond flour crust. You guys are all fucking wrong. Pizza comes on a gluten wheat crust. And if you can't eat it, it ain't pizza. You can call it whatever you want, but it ain't pizza. Moving on. So everything that's happened in your life to you up to this point doesn't fucking matter. And here's why. Because... It doesn't matter what did or did not happen or what you did have or what you didn't have or what you grew up with or what you didn't like that doesn't matter. What actually matters is what you believe about that. And if you believe that it's holding you down, my life's fucked because I was abused. My life's fucked because this happened. Yeah. Um, cool. Life's a bitch, but it doesn't have to stay that way. You get to decide. And if you don't decide, you've still made a decision. Hmm. Mental fuckery. Fuck cauliflower. I don't know if I would fuck cauliflower. That would be awfully rough. My pizza tonight, mushroom, pepperoni, and chili cheese. Just saying. Cool. Cigar cognac. Um, <clears throat> here's an interesting thing. Let's, let's break this down for a minute. Some of the people who have seemingly on the outside, the most amazing life, rock star, right? Came from the gutter, totally fucking made it, superstar, wealth, fame, relationships, every fucking thing that you could possibly ever want, and they end up hanging themselves. 
or they end up with fucking crazy drug and alcohol problems, an heir to a giant beer company, hundreds of millions of dollars, doesn't want for anything, goes like nuts and ends up in a mental hospital and loses his entire fucking everything. It's not what you have, it's what you do about it. It's not what you have, it's not what you don't have. It's what you do about it. It's a decision. It is a decision. I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? Some of you might recognize where that comes from. Some of you that do might think that he was singing to other people outside of him. Not accurate. What you think you are is what you are. To the level that you think you can is the level that you will be able to. There's nothing outside of you that is determining your situation or your circumstances. If you're stuck in one bucket area of your life, you have a story around something in your own in here that you've tied to that bucket. Let me give you a couple of examples. We've got the relationship bucket. We've got the health and wellness bucket. We've got the money bucket. We've got the love bucket, right? There's several more, but basically there's, there's five or six or seven big areas of your life that you categorize, right? You might totally have money and um, relationships and health in spades, right? But your intimate relationship is always a fucking disaster. Or you might have your intimate relationship is in spades and your health and fitness is in spades, but you can't figure out how to fucking get money to save your goddamn life. What's really interesting. It's not that bucket. You don't have a a money problem. You don't have a people problem. You don't have a success problem. You don't have a health and wellness problem. Now, some of us have hereditary things that we deal with. Cool. Fucking deal with it. It is what it is. You fall down and break your knee. You fall down and break your shoulder. You get in a motorcycle accident and fuck up your body. Deal with it, right? But don't get stuck there, right? Charles brought up a good point. He fucked up his neck pretty good earlier. Uh, Somebody, I think it was Donna, was saying something about her knees. Or it was Terry, right? Cool. We get older, right? It's part of it. But up here and what you do with it and do about it is what matters. You go to war because you got drafted and you lose your fucking legs. Okay, cool. You can come back and have a shitty existence for the rest of your time here on this planet or not. And guess who that's up to? This party needs more heart balloons. Okay, cool. I know, I come off a little harsh sometimes. The stories that you've created based on all of the experiences that you've had, all of the knowledge that you've concurred with, that you've gathered from other people that you thought were authority in your life, all of the situations and circumstances that seem to prove you're right, that fuck, this always happens like this to me, Those stories that we've created are now what's in our way. And ain't nobody outside you can fix that shit. Hello, Jasmine. What's up, Kevin? Ha. Yes, I did. I called you old. I'm old too. Hello, Ahmed. What's up? I mean, this is great stuff. This party needs more heart balloons, but yep, cool. Love Bucket, early 90s band from Seattle, right? What's up, Jacob? How you doing, brother man? You guys are great. I had a loving childhood, but I'll I'll take the party. 
let that shit go. So I've been, I've been working on this area for most of my life. This area meaning me in my own fucking way and how to get around it, through it, over it, whatever. And I've, I've worked with some, some people over the last, really over the last couple of years. Um, but a couple of people I've been kind of working with through this shit for years. And it doesn't matter what your parents did or didn't do. It doesn't matter what the competitor in your marketplace does or doesn't do. It doesn't matter what your spouse does or doesn't do it. Right. I mean, let's break this down for a minute. If you've got issues with your kids, you've got issues with your dogs, you've got issues with the neighbors, you've got issues with people at work, you've got issues with your money. There's a constant in all of that. There's a constant in all of that. You. I would imagine that most of the people that are watching this kind of get that. So how do we get it the fuck out of our way? It being us, our fucked up stupid stories that we've created that are limiting what we've got, what we have, where we're headed, what we're doing, how we're spending our time, who we're spending our time with. How do we fix that? How do we adjust that? How do we move it out of our way? You can't just bulldoze through it because almost always that doesn't work. You can't just keep sweeping it under the rug and settle because fuck that. You got to work through it, but interestingly enough, it's not difficult. And yeah, I smoke and it's in my own way and nobody's perfect but when I'm ready, I'll move it out of my way, right? These stories we tell ourselves about who we are, what we're capable of, and how it is, it being our experience. How do we move that? Let it remind you that life is too short to waste time with the wrong people doing things that don't fulfill you. Fucking bingo. Yep. Monkey see monkey here. Monkey do. No matter where you go, there you are. <clears throat> hey, Landon, stories in our head create the world around us if we don't control them. Yep, yep, yep. And it's, yes, and I know it's just semantics, but it's not that we control them, it's that we craft them really interesting concept. Control means that there's something there to be controlled. There's something there that we have to, and I know that a lot of people in the mindset, space, personal development realm, see it that way. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be something that you can control. It doesn't have to be something that you have to control. We gotta craft our stories. Because guess what? We don't live in 10 minutes ago and we don't live in 10 minutes from now. What that means is we don't live in last week or last month or 15 years ago and we don't live in tomorrow, next week, next month or 10 years from now. We live right fucking here, right fucking now. You're constantly, always crafting your story. However, What's interesting about that is if you've got something yourself in your way in an area of your life, it's probably not that area of your life because knowledge is really fucking easy to access. You can fucking Google how to do anything. You can learn how, if you, if you keep like getting out of bed, putting on your clothes and falling down the stairs because you haven't learned how to walk down the stairs, you can Google that, right? Learning how to make money learning how to build a business, start a business, create a business, go work for somebody else. Skills, we can learn that shit. That ain't it. It's not that you don't have a piece of info that's keeping you stuck. <clears throat> this moment that you're crafting your existence around, this present moment, 
this present moment, this present moment, this present moment. We have to stay in that present moment. And it would probably be a wise idea since we can think ahead to in general kind of plan a direction and have some ideas so we know that we're on track or not. But living here right now in the present moment, crafting our experience, we can go about it passively or actively, meaning changing that passively. Oh, I'm going to think positive thoughts and, and someday my life will be better. Someday my life will be what it want, what it's, you know, what I want. Someday I will have the things that I want or the people around me that I want. That's passive. That's, um, that's not being a participant. And this is the thing that I kind of want to get to participating in actively crafting your fucking experience. Everybody on here is an adult. Guess what? With the exception of your little kids or maybe your sibling that is like physically, mentally challenged that you're in charge of, or maybe your elderly parents, you can change anything in your life if you do this one thing, decide to, and then work through why you don't have that. What's up, John? My dog has manners. My dogs have manners. This one has me stumped. I installed the bark noise responder thing on my mailbox. Hmm. There is only now and there does not exist. Really weird fucking concept. You're never going to get there because by the time you get close to there, there is no longer there any longer. There is now somewhere else. It comes down to which voice in our head we allow to be the loudest. I'm going to walk you guys through something. I call it 51440. I've been working with a couple of one-on-one clients for more than a year now on this idea. 5, 14, 40. You have an inner voice that is your five-year-old. You have an inner voice that is your adolescent. And you have an inner voice that is your adult. 5, 14, 40. And most of us, and if you're 27 fucking years old, you've got 5, 14, 27. Like, don't give me that crap, okay? Same concept. Your five-year-old has a set of stories that the five-year-old you operates by software, right? We all came into this world with roughly the same hardware, basically. And then we've been programmed with all of these different programs and all of these different softwares. And we have this one main operating system that we have crafted. And there are three breaks in it. Roughly five years old, roughly 14 years old and roughly 40 years old and your five-year-old and your 14-year-old and your 40-year-old are all actually amazing at different aspects of your life. Your five-year-old and your 14-year-old and your 40-year-old or 27 or 56 or whatever the fuck it is are all responsible for different aspects of your present moment. Hello, Leona. We've gathered information up until we were about five years old, right? There's big changes at like six to 12 months of age, right? Things that happened kind of formulate who and how we are. And then two years old, three years old, another, and then five, big shift, five to seven, big shift, nine to 14, giant fucking shift. Adult. Thirty, forty, fifty, wherever you're at, that age that you kind of now operate in general by, right? The next big shift. 
And all of that is controlled by the software that we allow or agree to operate our lives by. I can't change the awful, horrible shit that happened to me when I was a little kid, and neither can you. But what you can change is that that happened then, and it's no longer happening now, unless I agree to continue going through those memories in my head and continue playing that software over and over and over, which creates the emotions and the feelings and the state of that, whether that's caused guilt or embarrassment or shame or whatever, that's what you're constantly currently creating, crafting, and continuing to build your experience around. You can't change that shit, but you can change if it affects you or not. You can change what it means to you or not. And you can decide that that has no bearing on how you are now. I'm not talking about intelligence here, folks. <clears throat> Those softwares that we're living our life by are not set in stone. They are not factual. No matter what you've been led to believe, either by other people or by yourself, you can decide that, ah, that doesn't work for me anymore. I'm going to make a different choice. And by making a different choice and then observing what comes up over the following hours, days, weeks, if you're paying attention and actually present and observing yourself, you'll notice that you fall back into these patterns, these habits, these ruts, this, that you've done over and over and over and over and over a million times. And guess what? Things like this, things like this, things like drinking, things like habitual patterns that we do that are like totally obvious. Those aren't really the ones that are actually affecting your life. You do the same shit with your thinking and your feeling, which causes your doing. Ooh, how about that? How you think about how you are determines how you feel about how you are. How you feel about how you are determines what you do about how you are. How you think about who you are determines how you feel about who you are. How you feel about who you are determines what you do about who you are. <clears throat> and the people outside of you doing better than you doing worse than you ah you're focusing on the wrong fucking thing they're not your concern you can't be like them comparing yourself to others it might take you two weeks to do something. It takes them two years or they're never capable of doing it. You might be trying to do something that somebody else like fucking woke up one day and said, I'm going to do this thing. Boom. Life's amazing. You don't know what's actually going on in that person's life just because their money bucket looks amazing or their fucking trophy 
husband or wife seems amazing does not mean that it is. Get your mind out of other people's business. You can't compare yourself to anybody else. And when you do, you have no power over yourself. <clears throat> By worrying about what others do, have, think, feel, say, is much like beating yourself with a stick. Let's think about it like this. Your little five-year-old, I'm going to get back into this for a second, tie these things together for you. Your five-year-old, your inner child, right? Your inner child, your core feelings and emotions, the being within you that feels the world is also the part of you that is the creation, the creator. And I'm not talking the God stuff here. I'm talking if you get to spend your day all fucking day long with puppies and you train puppies, life's fucking amazing. It's like, oh my God, it's always awesome. You're living through your five-year-old experience. If you're a painter and it's working and it's fucking amazeballs and life's awesome, it's exactly what you want. You're living through your five-year-old correctly. But if your daily activity and what you spend your time doing to generate your livelihood and make money and so you can live in this game that we call life, that's totally fucking awesome and your five-year-old's like on it and fucking rocking it but your fucking relationships are in the toilet, your 14 year old's totally out of whack. Well, if your daily activity and the thing that you get to spend your time here on this planet doing is fucking awesome and your relationships are amazing, but you can't balance your checkbook to save your fucking life. You can't pay your bills on time. You can't handle those things. Your 40 year old isn't operating the right way. But let's get back to the five-year-old for a second. When you step outside of yourself in your own head and you start looking at him and her and them and what they've got and how they do it, and oh my God, and da, 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 da. picture yourself as your adult self with a stick beating the fuck out of the five-year-old version of you. Would you do that? No. Stop doing it to yourself now because that's exactly what you're doing. Remember being 14 and I use 14 because that's the number that I use for it, but somewhere between 12 and 16, 17, right? When you're coming into your own as a more of a grown up person, right? There's that mental shift. Ah, it's not just all about me. And like, there's these other things going on and oh my God, hormones and all of this stuff and parents and control and teachers and all these people telling me what I can and cannot do. Cool. Put yourself back in that version of you shoes. And when you start thinking outside of yourself and well, they've got that and they, they have this and that looks way better than what I've got. Cool. What you're doing is basically taking away the car keys or grounding your adolescent self, keeping your adolescent self from doing the things that that individual got pleasure and joy out of when you were an adolescent, right? I got in some trouble when I was 16, 17 years old and my dad took my fucking keys away. We didn't have fucking smartphones back then. We didn't have computers. That was everything. I was grounded for like two weeks like a goddamn adult, like he's at his girlfriend's house three or four nights a week and I'm fending for myself and he's going to fucking grant, like, really? Holy shit balls. That sucked. Well, when you compare yourself now, what you do and don't have and how you do and don't do it, that's what you're doing to that adolescent version of yourself. The adolescent version of yourself will wreak havoc on how you feel about yourself. Cool. So then you can carry that on into the 40 year old version. Hey, when I was, let's see here, Tyler's a junior going into a senior year. So three years ago, I was 39 years old. I'm at 
his soon to be new high school in the auditorium with hundreds of other parents and other kids and Ash and my ex-wife and my kid. And there's this old fat dude who's bald and wearing glasses in a suit up on stage speaking to the people in the audience. He's the mayor of the fucking town and he graduated the same year I graduated. When I heard the year he graduated, I was like, what the fuck? And I'm in a hoodie and jeans and like Doc Martin boots. He's old. I'm not old. That was weird for me. Hmm. Am I grown up enough? Ooh, weird mental check. Ha. Huh. Okay. So I got that handled. I'm doing this right. I've got that like down pat. Huh. Okay, cool. I don't want to be like that old fat dude that's bald with glasses on stage in a suit. He's an old man. It's like my grandpa, same fucking age as I am. But I could have taken that the other way. Oh, beat myself up. Cause here I am in a hoodie and jeans and like fucking, you know, outdoors boots. I'm not good enough and really fuck up my adult version perception of myself. Oh, goody. This will be interesting. Just to make it clear in case any of you don't understand this, no soliciting means don't bring your shit to my fucking door. I'm not selling anything. What the fuck do you want then? Oh, I want this. Oh, you're not selling anything, huh? Fucking morons. Anyways. Hello, Travis. Dude, what the fuck are you doing here tonight? You should be off partying and hanging out with the woman. Congrats on the anniversary, brother man. I'm five, is that for me? That's funny. Self-imposed timeouts. Exactly. Old fat dude. So you saw me. Dude, you're not an old fat dude, dude. <clears throat> we have these, these perceptions of ourself that we think are set in stone, right? The, the culmination of what we went through and what we happened or what happened to us and all of that as we were a little kid. And then all of the things that happened to us between that and adolescence. And then all of that between adolescence and our adult self and all of that stuff that has happened to you, which is not accurate, happened because of you, which may, but still it's affecting you in, in ways that it shouldn't be. All of the things that happened around you, all of those things that shaped your story on who you are, what you are, what you're like, how you are how it be, we all kind of like take for granted that that's like actual fact and fucking in stone. And it's not. And what's really cool is it is merely an act of observing what we think we are, what we think we're like, what we think we can and cannot have. The simple, the simple act of observing that and questioning it will unravel it if you let it. What's up, Andrew? How you doing, brother man? And this is how we remove that self out of our own way. Hello, Reese. We're operating on these stories. We're operating from this pre-programmed software that we've either agreed with or we don't don't even think that we accept it as truth and it's not working for us right you've probably heard it as it's not serving you or it's no longer serving you yet your experience isn't quite what you want it to be even though the truth is everything in your life right now is exactly how you want it and if you've got the balls to actually confront that and go Huh, this part of my life sucks or that part of my life isn't the way it could be or oh my God, really? 
if you actually have the balls to confront yourself on, hmm, that might be because of me. And then without beating yourself up, go, okay, cool. So if this area of my life or this area of my life, or let's be real for some of us, my entire fucking life is not the way it could be, or I really feel it ought to be. Why? And if you will observe the storyline that you're living by and question it, it's pretty easy to go, oh, hmm. Yeah, I can see why I have that. I can see why that often happens to me. First, you have to be willing to recognize that nobody outside of you really has any control of what's going on in your life. Not your parents, not your kids, not your spouse, not your boss, not your partner, not your competitor. <clears throat> the people that you spend to, you tend to spend your time with may have a little bit of an effect on that because behavioral, behaviorally we kind of act like pack animals, but by and large, it's all up to you. And all you have to do is observe how you are operating your life and then consciously and presently ask yourself, is this working for me? And if it's not, you ask yourself, okay, cool. If that's not working for me, what would it need to look like to work for me? Or what might it look like if it were different? Simple. Yeah, I can't wait until Ash and I move to the mountains. We're, we're not that far off. They won't be able to come to the front door. And I don't fault people for trying to make a living and I certainly don't fault door to door salespeople, but <clears throat> if there's not an arrest warrant and the house isn't on fire and you're a fire department person and you're not somebody that lives around here and you're having an emergency, you're not my friends and family. Don't fucking come to my door. If you don't know me, there's a no soliciting signs like that says, don't do that. Fuck. God. Anyways, we have the ability to decide what it is that is for us and is not for us in every aspect of our life. If you've got relationships in your life that suck, move them on down the road. It's only 655 here. It's not really that late. I was on the phone with my mother the other day. It was her birthday. I was on the phone on the front porch with my mom. And the, we've got Royal Dairy Crest, Royal Crest Dairy or whatever, and they're cool. They're a hundred and some years old and six, every six months they go around and they knock on all the doors. It's fantastic. I'm talking on the phone to my mom and the guy walks up and he just interrupts. For fuck's sakes, really? Anyways, that is totally beside the point. You have the ability to choose differently. You have the ability to make decisions and you're the only person that can actually make an effect on who you are, how you are, and what you do with your life. You're in your own way. There is nothing that's in your own way. There's this dude that's like literally like not quite three feet tall crazy birth defects. He's a motivational speaker. He's married to a beautiful woman. He's got an amazing life, all these awesome relationships. He's got money. He does what he wants with his own time. He spends his time helping other people because that's what he gets off on. I know people that have gone to war and come back missing limbs and their lives are amazing. Like we really don't have anything to bitch about. And it's that bitching about that stuff that keeps us from moving forward, keeps us stuck. He is totally an amazing speaker. Absolutely blew my mind. 
first time I the first time I saw him, I forget what the fuck it was, what what he was on. He was on something eight, ten years ago, nine, ten years ago. And I was like, holy fucking shit, his story is amazing. Anyways, that's not what this is about. <clears throat> Almost all of us want it, life, or some aspect of it to be different or better, if that's the term you choose to use. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Right? It's the story that you're living by that you think is concrete and in place and not changeable that's keeping you stuck. And that story or that part of that story that's fucking you up in that area of your life is a you deciding and continuing to agree even unconsciously that that's how it is without questioning it. <clears throat> and that breaks down into a lot of things. Some of us just fucking procrastinate. Some of us spin our wheels mentally all the fucking time and we come up with all this amazing shit and we never take action and stick with it and see it through. But guess what? That's a story. There's part of your storyline that's keeping you in that space. Some of us have this fucking amazing idea and we put years and years and years and years into it forsaking everything else and it ain't working because we won't accept that maybe that idea is crap. Some of us are staying with spouses that we've been with for five or 10 or 15 years and we're actually unfucking happy and it doesn't matter what they did or what we did differently. We won't be happy with that person, but we stay there because whatever bullshit reason you're in your own fucking way, right? It all comes down to observing why you are doing what you're doing, why you are thinking what you are thinking. And maybe you're addicted to feelings that aren't good. I really like being angry and frustrated. It's like my default setting. I have to work around that all the time, right? It's a constant observation, constant adjustment on my part. Some of us, are just like addicted to being happy all the time and everything's fucking always butterflies and everything's amazing. That's rad. But they don't necessarily deal with when actually shit sucks. They just, Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I'm broke and I can't fucking feed myself or my dog. Life's amazing. Storylines fucked up. What's up? And only no, I think Kevin, I think maybe it's just you. Maybe the internet gods kicked me off, but um, like I said a few minutes ago, most of us have an area of our life that we wish was different or better, or we're stuck at a glass ceiling, right? With our physical health or in our relationships or whatever. All you have to do is observe it and question it and then decide that it can be however you want it to be. And it's simple. It can happen like that. <clears throat> and for most people, most of us, these softwares, these stories that we're living by are really, really deep, like really super deep. Like so deep that we don't even recognize that it could be any different way. That's just the fuck how it is. That's just how I am. My life is like this because blah, 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 blah. Right? And if we take the time to observe it and go, oh, hmm, maybe that's why that part of my life is like that. Interesting. Would I like it to be different? Yeah. Cool. What would it look like if? Fill in the blank. Oh, that's interesting. And then ask yourself the question, how would that make me feel? How would I feel about it? What would it look like if I lived in Canada, 240 miles from anybody, and it was totally quiet and totally peaceful and fucking deep snow 
and I had a giant greenhouse and I could grow my own food and I could go outside and fucking kill whatever I wanted to eat, right? That would be amazing. What would it look like? Hmm, it would look like this, it'd look like that, look like this. How would I feel about that? Fuck, nothing would make me happier. Cool. What am I doing now that's keeping me from having that? And then have the balls to be honest with yourself. Well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Cool. Are those things more important actually than that? Most of the time you're probably going to say, nope. Cool. What would I have to do differently to stop having this and have that? Or what could I do differently to have that instead of this? Interesting. Hmm. Well, if I did that, well, that'd be cool. And then you start going through that process and then guess what? Here's the trick. Two hours later, you catch yourself in that same old bullshit pattern habit thing that you default do. You go, ah, wait a second. Present. I'm crafting my experience based on right now. What am I doing? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Where am I creating? What am I, what am I doing? Ha, huh, really interesting. Cool. If there is something in, do you think social media lends itself to negative mindsets keeping up with Joneses? <clears throat> you're going to like part of my answer, possibly, and you're really not gonna like part of my answer, probably. And this is not specific to you, this is my opinion of this. Nobody outside of you fucking matters. What they do, how they do it, all of that. If you let that shit in, let me use the example of paying attention to the news all the time. We are smart fucking monkeys. We are super sophisticated. We're really intelligent. Man, we're crafty. We can do some really amazing shit. Our conscious and subconscious mind is a primitive fucking monkey. And it's really, unless until you train it differently, malleable to all this information. If you let it in, sure, totally. But that whole keeping up with the Joneses thing, I think you were on before I got into that. What people outside of you do and how they do it and what they've got going on and all that's none of your fucking business. It's, that has nothing to do with you. Right? I don't do the whole ego thing. I think we have a, an ego and we have a, an ego for a reason. And I think, I think the ego's purpose is necessary. I don't think we should kill the ego. I think that's fucking stupid. But the keeping up with the Joneses, hmm, that's a completely different issue. That's an I'm not good enough issue. That's an internal thing. You can't fix that by bigger car, bigger house, trophier wife. You can't fix that thing. That's an internal thing. Um, <clears throat> I think people, I think some people, um, there's a tool song that I often think in my head about some people. And there's some pretty drastic vulgarities in that song. But um, my opinion is that a lot of people are fucking weak because they don't recognize that they've got the actual power Yep. Yeah, and Reese, that was totally not like knocking you. Yeah, fucking our society now, in my opinion, is really fucking out of whack. And I'm not even talking our global community. I'm not talking the fucking mean streets of LA or, or Detroit or DC or New York, like I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about in general, our society. 
is operating in a way that's not really beneficial. I mean, some people love living in the city and that's their jam. Fantastic. Awesome sauce. I don't want to live to where I can pee out the bathroom window and pee on my neighbor's yard, let alone their house. Like, have you seen some of the neighborhoods that we build now? Like, holy shit. Like, that's a whole other tangent. The news, the media, propaganda, marketing done really well for all the wrong reasons. Right? Like all of the medications that are marketed on TV, all of the shit they try and give our kids when our kids don't want to sit still for the industrial um, conditioning. I mean, education, right? Like, yeah, I think there's some issues with our society, but by and large, we can change most of the stuff that's affecting us because it's really all an internal decision. So there's something in your way, probably for most of us, there's one or two people on here that I know well enough that their life and like all of their buckets are fucking amazing. Yeah, life is life sometimes, but this is fucking rad. And compared to five years ago, compared to 10 years ago, compared to 15 or 20 years ago, that's my life. Like, right, life's never going to be perfect. It's not a bowl of cherries. But in the parts of our lives that aren't really what we hoped they might be, there's a part of you in your storyline that you've accepted or agreed with something that's causing you to make the decisions or not make the decisions that you could make to fucking change it. Ain't nobody outside of you. It's you. And how you remove it is to observe it and then to question it and then to make a different decision and act on that decision. It's simple. Preach. Sometimes I get into it. <clears throat> and I'm not speaking at you guys. I'm not even really speaking to you guys most of the time when I'm talking things like this. Because let's be real, you guys don't exist. You're just all part of my storyline. What's up, Gabe Arnold? How you doing, brother man? Hello, Nicole. That's awesome, fucker. I'm super glad. It's, you know, I like it strong. Those cigars are quite strong. But boy, are they good. Boy, are they good. I'm glad that you're enjoying that. Cool. Hey, guess what? Leeds Lab, doors are open. If you didn't join Leeds Lab Live and you're still looking for the actual info or the actual how-to or learning to do the skill to go get clients, Leeds Lab, doors are open. And I'm gonna drop this on you guys putting something together. I'd like to get a little bit of feedback and maybe have a short conversation if the following interests you. Attraction lab, attraction lab, getting clients coming to you. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough, very hands-on, very small group 
with a small group of people to build inbound perfect client generation process. If you're interested in that, give me an attraction lab, hashtag attraction lab in the comments. I'll come back in the next day or two and I will ping you and we can have a short conversation. Sound good? Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Recognize this, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. And the only person that can be as much you as you can be on this planet is you. So step up and live the life that you want to be living. Cool? Yeah, unless you're a twat waffle and don't implement squat. Yeah, if you're not an action taker, if you like, no. Uh, that, but that'll happen in the, in the prequel. Don't you worry about that. So, you guys have a fantastic evening. I'm going to go hang out with my family because that's what I like doing with my time. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I'll see you soon.